Okay, so in the last class, we ended up by defining uh, what is a random variable, right? So we said that uh, random variable is a function that gives real number to my sample space, and such that it is f measurable, or uh, it is uh, measurable on my event space. So today we will uh, just defy a notion of what we call CDF cumulative distribution function and study properties of uh, cumulative distribution functions. And uh, so to prove this uh, notion, some properties of cumulative distribution function, we need to have some understanding of what is a con what is continuity of probabilities. So we'll take a slight detour and study what is continuity of probability, then we come back and uh, complete the properties of cumulative distribution functions. Okay, so last time we defined And we say that and now suppose I give a C a real number then we said that this quantity that x of mega is less than yeah, this belongs to f this is what we said as the definition of f measurability now suppose i want to know i know this quantity here this is for a given c whatever this i know this quantity belongs to my event space right already that is if x is a random variable this already belongs to event space and i can if i further know my probability function I can ask what is this probability. So this is now I have defining for any given C what is the probability. So let us call this f of x of C. So x is my random number and for any C you give me I am going I can define this. And now this f of x this function or I am going to write this quantity here henceforth simply as probability that x less than or equals to c cube. So when I write this it is what this means is set of all w such that x of omega is less than or equals to c. This is the shorthand notation I am going to use for this. So this is the definition I am further going to call this this probability as f of x c. So x is a random variable given to you and now on this random variable for any c coming from r I can define a quantity like this right that is what I am going to call it as f of x c. And this quantity we are going to call it as cumulative distribution function. So notice that I am defining this cumulative distribution function on this x which is a random variable. Okay? So that is why this function is well defined here.
Okay, fine. So I have now defined something called cumulative distribution function. Let us see how does this look for some of the random variables we know. Okay, so let us say so we know that um, let us say uh, let us take an example of a simple coin toss problem. I have the outcomes are heads and tail. But I am going to now on this I am going to define a random variable x which is going to take value 1 and 2. So, 1 corresponds to head and 2 corresponds to tail. I can define a random variable like this, right? So, because random variable is just a map which gives real numbers to your sample points. Now, let us say now on this I want to and assume my sigma f is just the power set of my omega. So, to understand what I this notation 2 to the power omega that means just power set all possible subsets of my omega. Now, this x is f measurable right if I because this is uh, we have discussed last time that if your f happens to be power set then any function any random x we are going to define on that uh, any random variable with that uh, al sigma algebra is going to be satisfying the properties of a random variable definition function. Now, So, I have an x here. Now, let us try to understand how this function f of x looks like. So, how do you expect it? So, let us say this is my x axis, this is my c here and this is my. So, if I take any value, so less that is less than 1. So, now let us say I am going to take a value of c. So, to plot this f of x function you need to find this quantity for all possible values of c right. Okay, so, now let us take a case where my c is less than 1. So, if my c is less than 1 here what is the probability that x is going to be less than or equals uh, let us say c is strictly less than 1 what is uh, let us say for time being let us set c equals to 0 0.5. So, what is the probability that x is going to be less than or equals to 0 0.5 in this example that is going to be 0. So, at till what point this is going to be 0? Okay, let us say for time being this is going to be 0 and let us say my, co my coin is fair both heads and tails are equally possible. Then let us say now I take this c to be 1. What is the value of f of x of 1 is going to be? 1 by 2. Why is that? Because if I if I asking x is less than or equals to 1, what I am asking is basically that what is the probability that head occurs in this case, right? And that I know is going to be half. Now, let us take another point here at till 0.75. So, if now I set the c to be 0.75, what is this value is going to be? It is going to remain same. Till what point it is going to remain same? or maybe I just want to write it as 1.25, I want to write it as 1.5 and I want to write it as 2 here. So, now this is going to be remaining flat till what point? 
to add to a what happens? This is going to be and what happens after that? For any value greater than 2, this is going to remain 1. So, this is the simple case that that is going to depict this function f of x for this simple example of coin toss. So, now let us look at an another example which we should now able to quickly plot. So, now let us say my second example is toss of a coin sorry toss of a dice. So, in that case my omega is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and uh, let us take my f to be 2 omega and let us take my x of omega to be omega for all omega to be. So, now how does my so let us start from 0. So, now how does it look like? So, let us say my coin is my dice is fair again. So, what is going to happen before 0? If, so, this is my f of x right. So, it is clear that till 1 this is going to be 0 right and what happens at 1? So, now it is going to be 1 by 6 then it is going to remain like this then it is going to be 1 by 6. And after that, it is going to, and then it is going to remain flat like this. So, fine, what this is giving you this by the definition of my cumulative distribution function, it is giving you probability that my random variable takes value x less than or equals to c for all possible values of c. Now, does this say anything about uh, then what about probability of x equals to c and what is what about probability that x strictly less than c? what we have defined is probability x less than or equals to c right. Then uh, why not uh, define it, why not define something like uh, another cumulative distribution function which is defined like this. So, I am asking basically a question why is that f of x of c you have defined probability that x is less than or equals to c right. Why not it define it like probability that x is less than c. or let us define uh, f of x of c is simply probability that x equals to c. And this is a definition that I have introduced right. I have called something as CDF that is probability that x is less than or equals to c. I could have as well defined like this and call this cumulative distribution function why not. Okay, Fine, so it so happens that even this things everything here it can be just represented in terms of this and we could have defined in different base, but we have to choose one let us say let us choose this, this looks more appropriate because we are talking about CDF in this case we want to include everything. But using this we can even represent what are these quantities ok. So, now how to represent these quantities now in terms of my CDF. So, what is this saying? Let us focus on this probability might x takes value everything till c, but not including c. So, if you want to so suppose here, here what I have done in this example, this quantity here at 1 this is what f of x equals to this is like 1 by 6 right.
but suppose if I want to redefine my function f instead of x less than or equals to c, I want to re, if I redefine it f, uh, f f of x f of x c to be simply probability that x is strictly less than c, then where it would have jumped here, uh, it would be have jumped exactly at one or before, or where it would have jumped. So suppose okay, whatever it is, like so, how this function would have okay? Let's only take this. So if I'm going to define this to be f of c, what would have happened at c equals to one here? At one also, it would have remained zero. What would have happened at exactly one? So then what is the difference between this and this? What is the difference between this function and if I just include less than request to? In which case? Yeah, in this case? So x let us say x c equals to 1, x is strictly less than 1, that means 1 is not included. What is that probability? It is still going to be 0, right? At still at one point it is going to be 0 here and maybe just soon after that it is going to jump, okay? So let us try to understand this, how to represent this quantity in terms of this. Suppose let us take a sequence C1. C2, this is a sequence, okay, such that well, let that are right. Let us say Cn is a sequence such that Cn converges to some point C. And but it is so let us take as a case that everywhere Cj and I take this sequence such that Cn is converging to C and it is monotone, right? So uh, let us say here j is greater than i. If you take a index j which is larger than i, cj is going to be larger than ci, but it is still less than c, both of them. So what basically I am doing is, I am taking a sequence here, let us take this point, uh, I am taking a sequence, suppose if c is equals to 1, I am taking a sequence here. That the limit converges to 1, but none of these points, all these points here, they are strictly less than c, right? because they are, all, everybody is on the left side of 1, right? So it is all going to be less than 1. Now in this case, how can I represent this quantity probability that x is less than c is this true that this is equals to limit as n tends to infinity probability that x less than or equals to it is correct why this i have brought in inequality less than so this is sorry I mean, I'm just using this uh, index here. Everywhere, what I'm doing is basically I'm looking at a sequence which is converging to C. I'm taking C n here, where every C n is less than C, strictly less than C, right? Because of this, I have this limiting condition. So we, we will just take it. We will come back to this 
definition again where I said uh, we have to make a detour, we will make a detour in a bit in a moment from here. So, we have this and I know that this quantity here is exactly f of x c of n right this is by definition now if you have this now how can i can represent in terms of f of x c n or like uh, if i want to get the probability that f of probability that x is strictly less than c i can express it in terms of this but now what is and this must be true for any sequence cn which satisfies this property so what it is basically what we are basically saying that okay if you want to compute this probability that x is less than c take any monotonically increasing sequence that converges to c but every point that is it is monotonically increasing from the left side and that is converging to that point c then i can write this probability as the limiting sequence of this function f of cn is this clear like how i can if if i am going to define my function f of x to include this inequality here and then the probability where i want x to be strictly less than c I, I will get it through this limiting case okay now and now i am going to define this case here as f of x to c minus and now i am just defining this this entire limit as this what what is this is like if you take any sequence that is from the left approaching c whatever that limit you are going to get let us call it f of x c minus ok what it is this thing saying basically saying that the value of f of x just before c that is what c minus means ok now now with this definition can i express p of x of c in terms of f of x c and f of x c minus how is that ok now uh, let us say I want to compute this probability this probability I can always represent as probability that x minus minus probability of x is less than c right this is just by definition probability that x is equals to c that means probability less than or equals to c minus probability x is strictly less than c now what is by our definition this quantity is f of x c minus f of x c minus so if you want to find what is the value of if you want to find a probability that x takes exactly value of c you can express that in terms of your f function by computing f of x at c minus f of x just before c which is defined in this fashion and uh, so what is basically this is saying is the value of the function at c value of the, the, the interpretation of this quantity here is the value of the function just before c right and uh, because of this how can you interpret this quantity this quantity is like a jump that is happening at the point of c right so we are going to denote it as f of x c so this is basically So, in all these cases, in this case, what is the jump at c equals to 1? 1 by 6 and jump at 2? 1 by 6, 1 by 6, right, in all this case. And in this case, it is just like 
half year. So we will see that like the way we can interpret this as the mass added by the realization C to your cumulative, cumulative distribution function. So the mass added by the value C equals to 1 is exactly 1 by 6 and similarly the mass added here by the point C equals to 4 is again 1 by 6 and that we are accumulating for all the points and that is why you are getting cumulative distribution function. Okay, so fine. As I said, we have chosen to define cumulative distribution in this function, and we could represent the other quantities, which is strict inequality and exact inequality, in terms of the same function f. Now, we want to study what are the properties. Suppose if you are defined much CDF like this, in general, what properties it has? Okay. So this is like a, let's call it as a Okay, so we will before we prove this, how many of you know what is a continuous function? All of you know? Uh, how many of you know what is a right continuous function? Okay, those who do not know, please raise your hand. Right continuous function. So okay, so what is the relation between those who know what is the relation between a continuous function, a right continuation function and a left continuation function? What positively? Is it true? Okay, okay just, just just can one of you give me what is the uh, meaning of right continuous? Suppose let us say I have a function and I have it like this.
let us say I have a function which is looks like this. Is this function continuous at this point x2? Is this guy continuous at point x1? Is it not continuous? But it is continuous, right? If I am going to come uh, from this side. So the value at x1 is exactly this quantity. Here, what kind of continuity is there? It is right continuity. And what about this? I have put it till this point, right? It is taking this value. So, okay, oh, our claim is the CDF function happens to be right continuous at all points. Okay, see this function here, whatever I have drawn. This guy is continuous in, in this interval, right? Everywhere it is continuous. Only what are the two points of discontinuities here? X1 and X2. And X1 and X2, they are kind of partially continuous, right? Like at one, X1 it is uh, right continuous, at the other point it is left continuous. What we are going to say is, and when we are going to say function is continuous? Yeah, at what point? It should be like we are going to say it is function is continuous if it is continuous at all the points. By that definition, this function is not continuous, right? At because at two points it is not continuous. Now, what we are going to say that if you have a CDF, it is going to be right continuous at all the points. You, we already saw this, right? When we draw this CDF for the dice we have like jumps which were always right continuous. Okay. So, now let us try to make this at least the other points more formal. <coughs> 